So, if you haven't heard from the voice already, <laughs> we have Zach the Scotch Lover back. Returned. <laughs> Returned. In the flesh. Yeah. <laughs> Been a little busy lately. A little bit. Yeah. Baseball season, you know. Yeah. Coaching it up. Yeah. You know what they say, those who can't play. Coach. Coach. <laughs> those who blow out their elbow. <laughs> Coach. <laughs> well, I threw the other day. Did you really? Golden. Is that your first time on the elbow? Like legit throwing? Yeah, since to, since Tommy John, that's like the first. Oh time. my gosh. Yeah. That's scary, dude. The worst part about baseball is being outside. Allergies are destroyed. Dude, I've had bad allergies lately. Like I get, because I have my tonsils and adenoids out, so I get like headaches oh, rather yeah. than getting like bad allergies. And I, I've had some serious <laughs> headaches lately. It's been Ohio bad. problems. We yeah. don't have that 70 degrees all year like some places. No, we don't. All right, so as I mentioned, you're the scotch lover, usually the peaty stuff, so I'm throwing you something not very peaty today. Yeah. But got you got the curveball. Got the curveball. You got to try new things, <laughs> right? So today we're going to try, if you've seen the title, you know this already, Lowland Scotch. This is my first time trying Lowland Scotch. Well, apparently you can't find it. Yeah, you really can't, <laughs> like anywhere. I had to, there was one store within like the closest, probably 15 stores of me that had this. And then, have you ever had high, or Lowland before? No. Okay, cool. So this is going to be new for both so of us. So I've really only had Isla a little bit Highland and then blended, obviously. Yeah. Okay, perfect. So so this will be a, an adventure for both of us. So I'm excited to try it. And we're going to compare it to Highland, Highland versus Lowland. There are five regions most commonly cited, I guess, when you're talking about scotch, but I figured Highland versus Lowland because there's like a little bit of poetry there, you know, Highland versus Lowland. I don't want to compare it to an island. It just be. And what's the one you were telling me before this is like impossible to get. And then Lowland is just hard to get here. Campbelltown. I hope I pronounced that right. It looks like Campbelltown, like Campbell soup <laughs> with town at the end. Can't find but it. But it's Scotland. So. But it's Scotland. So I'm probably <laughs> pronouncing it wrong. Like I did with Chivas, like I probably did with Brookladdick. <laughs> I can't pronounce any of these words. So Special shout out to Akintoshan for putting it right on the back. <laughs> Akintoshan. I love it. That is like the best thing yeah. ever. They they were like, that dude who podcasts, he needs us. <laughs> yep. Everything from Scotland should have that mandatory to be imported. Oh, obviously. <laughs> yes. <laughs> they should. They gotta, it shows up at the U.S. on the pier. They look at the label and they're like, I, I can't pronounce that. Take it back. <laughs> <laughs> Send it back. Yep. <laughs> So I'm pretty excited to try this. Um, as I mentioned, so we're going to take a drink of it, go through what we think we're tasting generally. Then we'll get a little bit more specific with the notes that they say from their website you should get. And then we're going to compare it a little bit to Glen Morangi. Because from what I have seen, Lowland and Highland aren't too horribly different. Like, it's not like Lowland versus like, or I mean Highland versus like Isla, where it's going to be super peaty or anything like that. It sounds like they're a little bit similar. So I'm excited to see uh, what we taste in this. So I'm going to go ahead and pour us a couple here. What are you expecting? I don't know if that's even a fair question because we've never had Lowland Yeah, I before. really don't know. Like, it's going to be weird to have scotch without the usual things I expect. Right. But maybe it's not going to be. Yeah, but maybe it's not going to be that different. I don't know. It's certainly going to be interesting. I'm a big Glen Morangi fan, so. Are you? Okay. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. And but Talisker, you know, is like my favorite. Right. So. And you like the peated stuff. Yeah. So, yeah. So that's going to be pretty interesting. I'm hoping, here's my hope. I hope that this is different enough from Glen Morangi that like if I were, if you were to hand me a glass and not tell me what it was, I'd be like, oh, that, that must be a Lowland. I'm hoping. <laughs> I hope, yeah. But we'll see. I don't know. Hopefully, it, well, other than the fact that this is probably all I can get at the store. Yeah. Hopefully this turns me on to Lowland. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. I looked up, so I, I Googled like the top probably 10 Lowland brands because I wanted to get something popular. I always try to get something that's accessible to like everybody listening, you know, and I looked up probably three to five of them and this was the only one i could get near us so i was like okay and once again it was only at one store and i don't live that far from you now so it's not like i have the cleveland access to right all the extras the higher volumes that they do up yeah. there yeah exactly so hopefully this is some good stuff that we'll want to keep on our shelf let's get our first nose here and see what we're getting syrup <laughs> syrup okay i can see that kind of the like the paleness of a Highlander, a Speyside with 
deeper like syrup, like like you yeah. said. So far, I'd say it smells different. I kind of like yeah, it. Yeah, it does smell different. It's really easy on the nose, too. Yeah, definitely, because I kind of got mine deep in there and didn't, and didn't yeah. really burn very much. Now, I believe these are both 40%, if I'm not mistaken. I think so. I know I know this one is. Oh, the Glen Ranch is actually 43. I didn't even realize. Oh. So the Glen Ranch is going to be a little bit hotter, but 40%. So it's not going to be you know overly hot. Um, on the nose, I would say some light flavors. It's reminding me of what I've had most recently that's similar to the Suntory Whiskey Toki, actually, where it's almost got like a, a paleness to it that I tend to get sometimes from uh, Irish whiskeys. But it has more of the scotch fruitiness and syrupiness that I would get from a scotch. Yeah. Definitely the syrupiness. Yeah. I'm going to try to pull like something the specific. characteristic scotch syrup. Yeah, exactly. Now, this is, like I said, both of our first times having this. So anytime I'm always like, I'm going to get the notes probably way off. It, it takes a while to nail down. But let's be honest. Sometimes their notes are like, I know that oh, yeah. I'm not like the guru here yeah <laughs> but like sometimes when you read their notes you're like i think you made two of those up that's a reach <laughs> yeah it's like the dr pepper flavors how there's yeah. like a million dr pepper flavors yeah that's definitely true and as a lot of people will always say notes can be very subjective like it could everybody's taste buds are different but i personally am of the school of thought that there should at least be some similarities yeah <laughs> but i think sometimes it's like the notes that they were going for in their production process don't necessarily carry over into the actual right real life or like if it's not as good sounding of a note as what they wanted like if it's sugary they'll be like caramel and it's yeah. not really caramel right that happens sometimes but this is definitely sweet it's got a more i can't tell if it's spicy or something a bit bolder than like the suntory that i mentioned or like an irish whiskey there's something bolder coming through maybe a fruitiness yeah, it's like a spiced fruit. Yeah, exactly. Not like a bourbon spiced fruit where no. it's like cinnamon cherries. Yeah. But something spicy, maybe like a ginger and like an orange, like an orange ginger tea. Have you ever had like citrus ginger yeah. tea? Yeah, yeah. You I'm definitely do get like there. an orangey syrup. Yeah, exactly. Because like if you put honey in like an orange ginger tea, oh, <laughs> I, we're making this up completely right now, but I I hope it's close. <laughs> we'll get the notes and it'll say more comparable to bourbon. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, no kidding. All right, let's go for the palate here. What did you think? Definitely got the syrup flavor. It um, was... a, the orange. You there's like an orange, like we were saying on the nose, that lingers in the mouth at the end. Like it definitely has like an orangey finish. Yeah, I think the the paleness and the syrupiness are up front, and then as you said, like the the orange, or I'm thinking maybe now apricot. I'm not 100 percent sure. Something like that really stay it's like a citrusy yeah for yeah. sure it's like a pale citrus it's more that's the right word it's got more body than i expected from the nose personally but like i've noticed with a lot of the citrus apricot whatever you want to say ones they don't last that long yeah that's true and i think it's just like the paler flavors can't they don't sustain in your mouth right but it definitely doesn't have a lasting flavor like I remember Glen Morangi having. Okay. That'll be cool to compare then. And, that and I haven't had it in a while, so that could be right. also made up like some of the tasting notes. <laughs> we'll see. And Glen, Glen Morangi being 3% stronger. Not a ton, but maybe that gives it a bit more body. I do, still have a, I do still have a distinct sweetness in my mouth, though. Like The finish is there. Nice and oily. It feels like it, it kind of really rolls oily. over your tongue. Yeah. I like that about it a lot. And then I'm, I'm going to try it one more time. That like like syrup honey flavor is really nice. On that last one, I got a little more of a spice too. Okay. I do think I get, yeah, I don't know what the spice is, but I think at first the spice is more pleasant and then afterward I'm getting more of like, for the spiciness I mean, like a, like a clove or like something bitter, which I get from malty stuff. A lot. I get. I always get like a cloviness, but almost like an Irish or something like that. I'm getting that slight bitterness staying on my tongue. And I almost like a lot of things that are really good with the bitter. They hold their fruity flavor through the finish with the bitter, 
And this one to me, the only thing I don't like is that I feel like that bitter covers up the sweet. It it kind of it kind of does. You're kind of right. I'm still tasting the sweet, but the bitter's leading. It's in yeah. The finish. It's less of a balance in this one to which, me. To me, for this price point, though, that like this is tastes pretty good. Yeah, for fifty bucks, I I like this. Yeah, I would say I'm expecting. I also haven't had Glen Morangi for a while, but I'm expecting to like it more than the Glen Morangi because it does have a good complexity to it. And even though it's transitioning to become more bitter, it is transitioning. Like that's yeah, pretty cool. I always like when you get it's it's defined enough that you can say it's transitioning. Right. Exactly. Also, one more note about this, compared to some other scotches I've had, um, especially, actually not even a scotch, but the Texas single malt that we had, significantly less grainy, less like bready to me, and I'm sure we're going to read the notes, it's going to be like baked bread, <laughs> but significantly less malty to me. Yeah, definitely. I'm getting... Like, I wouldn't even pull that out as a characteristic. Yeah, me neither. Like, I'm, I'm getting more of a... a syrupy and then flavor that i'm getting like malt and the syrup is like what brought me to scotch so like i really oh. like that about it because the syrup in all of them is what i really like and that's why I th- the peated ones i really like because i always just get like straight peated syrup <laughs> and this one when it first hits your tongue it's really there yeah that's it's heavy up front it's impressive when it first hits your tongue like you said it does kind of get a little bit more bitter but the beginning of the palate's really nice. I'm pretty impressed. And as I like swish it around in my mouth, it holds for a while. Does it? Yeah. Instead of like swallowing quickly, chewing it a little bit more. I would say so. There's a distinct point though where it flips. It flips hard. And it becomes bitter. Now that you say that, like I'm feeling it. I see what you mean. All right, let's see what they're giving us. And we're gonna just be super duper wrong because this is our first time having it. Whatever, if I get it wrong, I'll just blame it on the hot sauce I had with dinner. That's always my go-to. I <laughs> ruin sauce. the palate. Yeah, just ruin my palate. Okay, so this also talks about the visuals. That's not something I ever really talk about too much. It's definitely a little bit pale, kind of the pale golden like you'd see on like a Highland, like the Glen Morangi. Very similar. Um, what they say is. Okay, they they go all into what creates the color of it, so I'm not going to talk about that. <laughs> On the nose, it says, <laughs> a vibrant bourbon infused, that's funny, but vanilla and coconut with layers of zesty citrus fruit. So we actually got that. That's impressive. I don't get a coconut, but... Mm-mm, me neither. I mean, it's sweet enough that that makes sense. Like, that's not off the wall here. And the citrus is definitely there. I'd have to revisit the nose for the coconut, but I will say when it transitions on the palate to the bitter, I could kind of see like that being like coconut milk. You ever have that where it's yeah. like actually not as tasty as you think it's going to be? And it's kind yeah, of you bitter. think it's going to be delicious because they have like palm trees and people sitting on the beach on the cover and then you drink it and you're like, oh, what is this? And it's actually like bitter. That's That might be the bitterness, honestly. Yeah. If you Now that I say that, that's not too bad. Because at first it's like when it flips, it's a subtle bitter that's like... And then it transitions to a pretty hard bitter. Yeah, for sure. And that, you could almost call that the syrupiness would be like the, the almost like the syrupiness of like a pina colada mix or something like that. Yeah. I personally would not have said that. Like, that's for sure. Like, obviously I didn't. I would not have been like, oh, coconut pina coladas. <laughs> but I can see the parallels there. Now the the they call it to the tongue, but the, the palate not too bad. So it says lively with vanilla cream, which could be that syrupy, you know, creamy. Yeah. And then it says coconut again. Not too sure about that. And then for the fruit, it says white peach. That's not too far. That's from close apricot. enough to an apricot. Yeah, or an apricot. That's pretty close. How do you pronounce it, by the way? I've always said apricot. You know how to say Heather, so I'm just <laughs> trusting you on this. <laughs> I think it's apricot. Apricot. All I worked right. in a grocery store when I was 16. Well, there you go. Yeah. So you're an expert. Apricots in aisle six. <laughs> okay, I'll trust you there. I have no idea. I pronounce it. It's one of those words I kind of pronounce differently every time. I can see for sure the white peach. I don't know so much about a vanilla cream as much as just a cream, like a creamy, syrupy flavor. It's thicker than like a white cream or whatever, or like a vanilla cream to me. Exactly. Because it's so, but that might just be because it's so oily. Yeah, that's true. I feel like it's the flavor plus the oily 
right level or the how oily this is in the mouth makes it taste like syrup. Yeah, exactly. Kind of like we said with um, Crown Royal Apple. How yeah. it was like more the feel makes you think you're tasting syrup because yeah. it's like so oily. Now, this I would say, I was actually just thinking, have you ever, and maybe I'm just a weirdo, have you ever tried sweetened condensed milk because it looks really tasty? And yes. It's actually not. Same as like coconut milk. I made a recipe with that not yeah. that long ago and I tried it because I was like, this looks delicious. Yeah. Absolutely delicious. <laughs> it's not. It's just like sugar and sludge. <laughs> but that's kind of what the bitter with the sugar is kind of reminding me of. Yeah. I don't know. So that's what they, they say on the palate. They say vanilla cream, coconut, and white peach. And then to the end or the finish, they say crisp sugared grapefruit and a lingering hint of spice. Not really seeing the grapefruit too much, yeah. except that grapefruit's kind of bitter and gets your jaws a little bit. But I'm not getting that type of bitter. Yeah, I'm not either. And I feel like I can see the white peach because mm -hmm. the white peach is there and fades and fades and fades. Agreed. But I am not going to say grapefruit bitter. <laughs> I don't... Because yeah. it's not a fruity bitter. Right, Or exactly. a sugary bitter or whatever you want to say. It's like... Pale bitter. <laughs> Pale, yeah. Coconut milk, kind of. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I it's just, almost like a dried fruit bitter more than it is like a grapefruit bitter. That's Yeah, that's pretty accurate. I just took another sip, too, and I'm still not really getting the grapefruit. I, I, I enjoy this, and I don't like grapefruit, so. <laughs> <laughs> Good point. I can tell you that. I also do not I like don't grapefruit. compare them as very similar at all. <laughs> yeah. I also, on the nose, don't get a lot of coconut. I can kind of see it in the palate. A little bit, like, during that transition from sweet to bitter, I can kind of see a coconut. Yeah. I definitely wouldn't have pulled it out. <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't have said that. Right. But, like, once you read it, you can see where they're going, at least. Mm -hmm. I can at least see where it's coming from. I for sure see the white peach. Like, the apricot that I was thinking, I see that. And now that I've put it down for a minute, the bitter went away from my mouth... And I still have like a very slight hint of that pale fruit. Yeah. We had a different one that was like that. What was that? It might have been with Justin. I don't remember. Those of you listening, you might remember. There was one like that where we said the more you drink it, the bitter kind of builds. And then if you step away from it, it might have been Pendleton. And then if you step away from it and come back, it's less bitter again. And th you're right because we had that conversation and then going back you get more of the fruity right on the front overall i it's like good it. yeah i want to hear your you're the scotch guy here i don't think that i would go for it if i was looking just for scotch just because i'm boy like smoky <laughs> yeah yeah it needs to be smoky or peated <laughs> um but just looking for whiskey it's pretty good i like the amount of syrupiness it has like the characteristic scotch sweetness right i like the citrus not that big of a fan of how hard it transitions to bitter okay yeah i think i almost like the transition to bitter not a big fan of the bitter <laughs> that yeah i think it's more that like i like that it transitions and it's noticeable yeah like, that's like characteristic of it's over forty dollars right because it actually has like a flavor transition but i just don't like the bitter that they went with Right. And I don't know if that's like characteristic of this brand or of that's Lowlands true. in general. That's a good point. And that's actually something I wanted to mention is we're comparing Highland to Lowland here, but this is not Highland versus Lowland. This is yeah. a Highland versus a Lowland. You know, I always try to make that very clear. My hope is that through this, we can get an idea of, oh, this is probably what a, a typical Lowland tastes like, you know. But well, this is the only one you can buy. So. Yeah, this is the only one I can. So for me, this is what all lowlands taste like, unless I travel to a different this state. This is our rep. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you're repping all of Ohio, buddy. Good job, Akintoshan. <laughs> you're actually available near me. <laughs> um, but the other thing that I'll say when we're talking about flavor notes that seem like a little bit of a reach, I know it is aged in American oak, but I, it says on the nose bourbon, and I think if you pay really close attention you can see the little flavor that makes this not just smell like a scotch that's aged in sherry casks or aged in something different. You can just a little bit see it, but it's not 
as pronounced as I would want from a bottle that says American Oak. That's totally biased, totally my personal opinion. <laughs> but does that make sense? Yeah. I, as somebody who drinks a lot of bourbon. So that's just my my personal opinion. Overall, I'm pretty impressed. I'd pay 50 bucks for this. That's what I was about to say. Like, as much as I said I didn't like certain parts of it, like, I would definitely still pay $50. Yeah. Like, I would still buy this, especially it being, like, the only low one we can get our hands on. Yeah. I would still buy it. Now, let's compare it to some Glen Morangi and get an idea, if we can, of the difference between Highland and Lowland. Keeping in mind that that's not the end-all, be-all difference between Highland and Lowland. But Glen Morangi is a pretty good representation of Highland, from my understanding. From from the bits that I've had, and I've mentioned before, I don't, I don't know Scotch well enough to be like this is a typical Highland, this is a typical Lowland. But from what I've had, I agree. I, it it's a pretty average Joe. I yeah. feel like. But I also feel like Scotch isn't like bourbon, where it's like this is what Scotch tastes like. Like I feel like right. they all have more variation than we do here. Yeah, they they get so creative with the finishing, whereas bourbon gets so creative with the. Um, the initial ingredients, but I was just going about to say, I see you looking at them. They're almost indistinguishable side by side. It looks like it's a little lighter. Yes. Like Glen closer to the Suntory that you have than it is to like the color of syrup. Right. But like very close. Pretty close. Pretty close. But I agree. I think you're right. It's a little bit lighter. All right. Let's give, let's give it a smell first. What are your thoughts? It is a little harsher on the nose. Yeah. And I don't know if that's its 3% higher alcohol <laughs> content. Or the 16 less dollars. I want to say Glen Morangi's 34, I want to say. My, right off the bat, my thought is, this ta- or smells more different than I thought it was going to smell. It, it is distinctively different. Like, you would definitely pick each, I think even like a brand new to whiskey person. Yeah. Could pick these up and be like, those aren't the same thing. Those aren't the, exactly. You might not know which is which, but they're not the same. Yeah. I think I need to apologize a little bit for the bourbon comment because <laughs> put them side by side real quick. Like go Glen Morangi and then go straight to Akintoshan. I can see the almost bakery sweets that a bourbon has. I can see that putting it next to the Glen Morangi. Yeah. Not on its own. On its own, it's not that – it's not like super like characteristic – yeah. Like, it's not like, oh, hits you in the face, like, oh, that's, like, bourbon. Right. If you if you drink bourbon a lot and you nose bourbon a lot, you're not going to nose that and be like, oh, it smells like bourbon. Yeah. <laughs> but putting it next to Glen Morangi, I really see it now. I'm excited to see the difference in taste. Let's try it. I want to hear your thoughts first. It's a whole lot different. <laughs> more different than I expected. <laughs> Way more different than I expected. Tasting the Akintosh, I thought, I don't think this is going to be as different as I want it to be. This is more different than I expected. I want to hear, what What do you think about the Glen Morangi? I mean, I still prefer it. Oh, do you really? Okay. Yeah. For the price or outright? Like the $16 difference or even if they're both $50? It's tough because I do like it more, but it's so less defined in its flavor profile, which is uh, the price point. Right. Yeah. I can see what you mean. The... The base flavors are a little bit maybe sweeter. Um, I have an idea of what I think the note difference is here, but I'll get to that. But the Akintoshin has more going on, but the more and more distinct. Like I can pull out each one, whereas this is just like a general category to me. Right. Except the general category is pretty good tasting. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I see exactly what you mean. I do. I actually think I prefer the Akintoshin because. I can get past the bitter for the more that's going on. I think that's a lot of fun, like all of the stuff that was going on with the palate. But I see exactly what you mean. The palate of this being more basic is a little bit more enjoyable. And my theory is, per like specifically, um, when I went back and forth, I just did like Glen Morangi immediately to Akintoshin. And I'm thinking the Glen Morangi is more like a sweet orange juice Whereas the Akintoshin, it really brought out that white peach when I went back to it. And that white peach has the bitterness associated with it that we mentioned. And I think that's a little bit less enjoyable overall than having sweet orange juice. Yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah, because it's sweet orange juice from beginning to finish. Mm-hmm. And that's like all you get. Even on the finish there, 
I'm letting it kind of sit, and I'm still getting that orangey flavor. I think that's, if I had to guess, I don't know your brain, but if I had to guess, I would say that's probably why you like it more, because now, on the finish, it did fade to bitter for me, but like I said, I always get like a cloviness or like a bitterness on the back of my tongue from scotch. Um, on the finish there, it did fade to bitter eventually, but the Akintoshin, when I swirled it around my mouth, did it in my mouth. It kind of yeah. became bitter. But it seems like from their profile, that was their goal. Mm-hmm. Like, that's the intention. And I almost feel like if we had a little bit more expensive of a Highland, it wouldn't do we need be to get so the, harsh. Do we need to get the Macallan down? <laughs> <laughs> we could. I also prefer the Akintoshin because, and this could 100% just be a price thing. I love the finish of the Akin or the the oiliness. The mouth oh, the feel. oiliness is much better, and that's what made me hesitate in saying which one I liked. Yeah, is I like the oiliness in any whiskey I drink. Yeah, yeah, that's a good point. You've mentioned that before. You like that syrupy, essentially, yeah. not just the taste, but also the feel. I think because like we had that, we sat and had almost that entire glass of Akintoshin for the first review. And I never once thought, my mouth's getting dry. A few sips of the Glen Morange and my mouth's getting dry. Yep. I think so. So that, But I'm trying to not judge it off that because I know its price point is different. Probably. Like, it's hard to say this is better when it's $16 apart. Exactly. And that's why, like, the goal of this episode is not to say, oh, the more expensive one is better than the cheaper yeah. one. But more to be like especially on the palettes, what different flavors we're getting. Now, I didn't look up Glenn Morangi's notes, but I will read what they say on on the back here. It says, honeyed sweetness with notes of citrus, which is definitely there. The citrus, it's not notes of citrus. Yeah. It's pure citrus. That's I totally <laughs> agree. And then it says, almonds and creamy vanilla for a rounded complexity and enticing smoothness. I can totally see if you've ever had an unsalted unroasted almond yeah well i don't think you can eat raw almonds maybe they're just oven roasted without salt whatever like the quote unquote healthiest ones are and you chew it and get that bitterness from the skin that in the Glen Morangi. I that's see. it yeah i was gonna say like a cashew or something like an unsalted but yeah an almond's probably more accurate yeah that that makes sense to me funny that they both do say creamy vanilla and uh or no i guess cream and vanilla in the akintoshin whereas this says creamy vanilla Maybe it's just my love of bourbon, but I don't get overwhelming vanilla by any means. To me, both of them seem like all of the other notes that we said seasoned with like, like a little bit of vanilla. Yeah. That's kind of what I get. But I feel that. like that's the American thing. It's like, look at all of our recipes here. When it says vanilla extract, you pour the whole thing in there. That's a good point. Versus overseas, they probably are like, use one drop. <laughs> yeah. Just one drop. That's a good point. You want yeah. a hint of vanilla, not the whole thing to taste like straight up vanilla hershey bar <laughs> yeah i just um for the first time tried vanilla flavored milk yesterday yesterday like regular milk or like, like regular milk flavored <laughs> to be vanilla it was delicious but it's exactly what you just said where it's like milk with a ton of vanilla <laughs> extract and it was super vanilla -y, but it was really good i like Soy milk, like vanilla soy milk or vanilla almond milk. Yeah, I those drink are pretty good. I like the unsweetened vanilla almond milk. That's what I drink a lot. But those are like the polar opposite of the vanilla that's they're talking about here. Right, right, exactly, because they're so artificial compared to it. So I could almost see with the unsweetened vanilla almond milk a little bit, but that's still stronger vanilla than, yeah. than we're talking here. It's almost like vanilla extract if you've... <laughs> I love how in this episode, stuff keeps coming up that I've tasted and I shouldn't have tasted, <laughs> like coconut milk, uh, sweetened condensed milk, and now vanilla extract. If you've ever smelled it and been like, this smells amazing, and then tasted it without any sugar or anything, it's super bitter and vanilla-y. That's kind of like the vanilla in both Have of you these. ever had it from like Mexico? No, I haven't. It's like multiplied by 1000 is that right it's so intense i have not i've never had yeah they say like cut like every recipe you have by like one tenth for the amount you use really? when you get it from there because it's like straight from their vanilla pods or whatever yeah i uh just saw a tiktok about it the other day like all the stuff that's in some of our foods that's outlawed in other countries and i i don't have an opinion politically on whether that's a good thing or not yeah. but that's a good i've heard that Foods that are the same brand in other countries, they have different ingredients because of the different laws, and they taste way different. Yeah. I think that's cool, whether it's a good thing or not. I don't I don't know. I'm not 
educated enough to make an opinion on that. Now, I think what we got to do, because of the price difference, we shot about $16 low. We got to shoot about $20 or $30, I think, high, and try the Macallan just a little bit to compare them. I'm going to grab some Glencairns if you can grab the bottle. Because I'm interested to see, at least if we can compare two Highlands to one Lowland, maybe we'll get an even better idea. And it'd be great to compare two Lowlands if we could. If I could find some, yeah. yeah. Oh, the dry mouth from the Glen Morangi versus... That That's what I mean. It kills so it a little distinct. bit for me. Yeah. Now, this is the Macallan 12-year. So, it is, I, I believe... Oh, no, 43%. I was thinking 40. It's actually also 43%. Just is that like, a characteristic of Highlands? <laughs> not that I'm aware of, but maybe. I feel like it's super specific. For that does two of seem. Them. That does seem super specific. That could be a thing where it's like just at this much is where it tastes the best. I don't know though. All right, let's give this a try. Oh, that's so much easier on the nose. Yeah, doesn't burn like the Glen Moran. Now does. the orange is like more pronounced than the sweetness in this one. I think. Yeah, it's not. Or citrus, I guess, is what I should say. Right. It's not creamy, syrupy, sweet like both of the other ones, basically. Yeah. And I feel like maybe the Glen Morangi is similar, but they use the sweetness to hide the harshness. That's a... Yeah, that's a pretty accurate observation. Because once like. you get past that sweetness, it's pretty harsh. Right. And I feel like with the cheaper price point, that's what they have to do to make it less harsh. I could see that for sure. Now... These two side by side are a totally different thing. The Akintoshin versus the Macallan. Oh yeah. You're talking fully different ball game. Now I'm gonna smell the Glen Morangi. Similar but different. It's like more citrus, less sweet, yeah. less harsh though. Right. Alright, I'm gonna do a I'm gonna try the Macallan and probably immediately try the Akintoshin and see what happens. I want you to read my mind and tell me what I'm thinking, but you, you go ahead. <laughs> One, it's a thousand times better. <laughs> than the Glen Morangi. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, not that the Glen Morangi's bad by any stretch, but, like, uh, its finish is so pronounced and so good. Yeah. It's still, like, the citrus from from the time it touches your mouth to through the finish and long after. Mm -hmm. Like, I still have the citrus now, and that okay. was with mixing a sip in between. Of the Akintosh. Yeah. Yeah. What I think I see from this is in both the Akintosh and the Macallan, I'm seeing more body and complexity, but less sweetness. Like you were saying, where they almost use the sweetness to cover it up. This almost comes across a little drier, but still more citrus, like you said. Yeah. It's still not fading into as much bitterness but it's not as oily no i think the akintoshin's more oily than this i think the akintoshin has the best mouthfeel out of all three but even without the oily i like the long citrus taste a Do you lot. really i might i'm gonna have to get another sip here i might like the akintoshin better than the macallan and maybe it's because i'm a bourbon guy <laughs> <laughs> yeah you got that little bit of bourbon note yeah feel free if you need more of any of them in the realm of like how smooth they are, I would put these equal. Mm -hmm. And they're not the same price point. No. I think 20 or $30 difference. Yeah. I can't remember if the Macallan's 70 or 80 What I will say I noticed going Macallan straight to Akintoshin, the Macallan definitely has more spice that gives it a bit more excitement. Yeah. Drinking the Akintoshin alone, I don't want to get off the wrong impression, because if I didn't compare it to anything and I just drank it, it was killer. I really liked it. But comparing now to the Macallan, the Macallan's a little bit more exciting. There's a little bit more going on. But also surprisingly more harsh. Kind of strange. You think the Macallan's more harsh? A little bit. It is. But it's like, it's harsh in a good way. Yeah. Is it not harsh in a cheap way? That's exactly what I mean, because yeah. like... It is more harsh, but then I go to the Akintosh and, and it's almost a little watery. It's almost a little like... Yeah, but I think without the pronounced fruit through the finish, anything harsh is bad. Good point. Without a fruit throughout. So like when you have like the white peach that they call it, which we think is more of an apricot, <laughs> yeah. um, I think a harshness would ruin it, which is good that they don't have it. Good point. But the harsh with a citrus, I enjoy. Yeah. 
If the Akintoshin was as harsh as either of these, I probably wouldn't like it as much as either of them. I agree with that. But it has a fantastic mouthfeel. But the more I drink the Macallan, the more sweet it is right up front. Yeah. And I really like the, the sweet and instant disappearance of the sweet to a citrus. Yeah. And I'm I'm cheating a little bit and reading the notes here. And they mentioned spice and dried fruit. And that dried fruit is definitely kind of like a dried citrus fruit to me. But that definitely delivers more body. Yeah. That combination. Than having the Akintoshin. I just thought of a good word for it. The Akintoshin is more mellow. Whereas the, the McCallan's a little bit more exciting. By no means are either of these bad, though. No, all three of these aren't bad. Yeah, yeah, that's a good point. I forgot about the Glen Miranda there for a second. <laughs> By no means are any of these three bad. Now, it's like, the only thing with scotch is you have to remember, like, if you're comparing it to, like, and I don't, I know that you're not comparing it to the quality of bourbon because bourbon's always going to be cheaper because we're importing all of this stuff. Right. But, like, drop any of these by 10 to $15, and would I pick this over a bourbon, like, yeah. I'm picking the Glen Morangi over a twenty dollar bourbon most of the time. Yeah, yeah. Or a twenty four dollar bourbon or whatever. That's a good point. Yeah, and I always like it's like you said, it's so hard to compare the two. People always ask, which one do you prefer the most? Scotch, bourbon, Irish? And I always say I, I cannot decide because they all bring something different to the ball game. Right. And, and they're all different. Like I want them in a different time period. Yeah. Like exactly. there's a campfire drink, there's a eating dinner drink, there's A sitting by the fireplace drink. Exactly. A weak cigar drink, a strong cigar drink, a weak dinner drink, a strong dinner drink. Exactly. And I don't think I can really put the Akintoshin to like a dollar amount versus a bourbon. Like, oh, it'd be worth, you know, if it was a bourbon, it'd be worth this much. I, and because a lot of people that follow me know that I do a lot with like best bourbons under $30. I like this bourbon for $40, that sort of a thing. Um, But, I can't really put a dollar amount to it other than to say, as a scotch, I'll pay $50 for that bottle. This is a bottle I'd pay $50 for, and if I had somebody coming over who liked scotch, I would let them try it, and and they'd probably like it. And it's weirdly exclusive to scotch more to me than it is to Irish. Which part? Like the price, where it's in its its own category Yeah, as scotch. Where like Irish, like if an Irish was $70, and I was like... That forty dollar bourbon tastes just as good. True. I'm not buying the Irish, but I'll pay twenty dollars extra for a Scotch. Scotch has a pop culture hype behind it. Yeah, it's almost like dry wine, where it's like like parts of it are bitter, but they're supposed to be, and so it's kind of like that's what makes it cool. <laughs> yeah, like kind of how I said, like the Akintoshin gets really bitter, but it's pretty cool that in my mouth I can be like, oh, this is fruity. Oh, now this is bitter all of a sudden. Like that's kind of cool. Um. But yeah, I agree. I I might be I don't know that I would say I'm more critical of Irish as much as Irish I don't know I don't want to say for in the higher price range you can get better quality, but in the lower price range you can definitely get really good quality. Like I feel like a Tullamore Dew is dirt cheap. It's like twenty dollars, I think, near us, and I can drink it neat. For anything to be twenty dollars, I always say this about like Evan Williams bottled and bond. For it to be $20 and I can drink it neat, I love that. That's, like, yeah. sweet. Because if somebody mixes it, I'm not going to want to wring their neck. <laughs> I'm going to be like, all right, whatever. It's $20. It's like, how much is Wild Turkey 101? 20, it was 24 and then 23 but I think it might be back to 24 but I don't know for sure. That's another one. Oh, yeah. It's Wild like, Turkey is a it's a it's um, underrated for sure. Yeah. 101 specifically. I'm not a huge fan of the, I think, 80 or 81. I think I've only had that like one time and it's, yeah. it's, it's just nothing. watered down 101. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's all it tastes There's like. no different flavors. There's right. no, like, it's still like $20 harsh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And at that, at that proof, it kind of loses all the complexity that the 101 has. Yeah. So. Except for the weird bottle you had. Yeah, uh, yeah. I actually just talked about that in the last episode. The the weird bottle. <laughs> the, I still use it for prop whiskey because I can pour it in there, and pour it back in the bottle. I don't. I don't care. You don't care. <laughs> yep. <laughs> All right. So, closing thoughts. Let's talk about G- Highland versus Lowland in very general terms, just because we don't know. We haven't had multiple Lowlands, and then let's talk about Akintoshin since this is the Akintoshin episode. What are your thoughts? Highland versus Lowland, merits and problems. 
from just judging Lowland off of this bottle. Yep. The Akintoshin here. It has a distinct difference in flavor profile, whereas Highland seems to be more so on one spectrum, where it's like the citrus is in the dried fruits and the bitter is all kind of in one alignment. Mm -hmm. And then the Lowland seems to have this major transition from its citrus fruits and sweetness to its bitter and pale fruits. And I don't know. It's worth a try for sure. Yeah. Worth buying to give it a shot. Yeah. Without a doubt. Yeah. I think you're you're pretty much right. They're, they're maybe not as different as I would want them to be. And I'm sh- I'm certain somebody's going to say, oh, well, they're, they're, this Lowland is way different. And I'm, I hope you're right. You're probably right. Um, they're not quite as different as I want them to be. But especially the palates are different. But the noses are distinct. Like you can yeah. smell the two de- separately, and be, and maybe it's that bourbon. Maybe that's just in my head from reading that. But you can tell the body difference. Now, without another <clears throat> Highland, or sorry, without another Lowland to compare, my guess would be, and off the wall guess here, is that Highlands all seem to have like this tiered taste, where it's just like bourbon, where a twenty dollar bourbon. 30 40 50 dollar bourbon has this like upgrade in taste but it's the same profile and i could see them doing more with the lowlands okay just because where there's more variation within itself okay and that and that's another bias that we should talk about is that this is like an american oak mccallan is sherry oak i'm sure people are gonna be like oh you're comparing apples and oranges but once again my only option was to buy an orange because (laughs) there's not a lot available near us um so i'm sure that gives it different character and i would like to compare a sherry oak lowland to a sherry oak highland maybe we'll have to do that in the future and i'll have to travel far and wide to get get my hands (laughs) i have to go outside of ohio to get that yeah no kidding um but i can see what you mean at least in my experience i've seen a lot of highlands and a lot of space sites that are all um sherry oak or maybe they're a combination of oaks but they have that similar fruitiness that you get from sherry oak and so i think that is why we're biased to say oh maybe lowlands they do a lot more with because having a a american oak really gives it a different characteristic that you don't get yeah and so i'm wondering maybe if we do sherry oak versus sherry oak maybe we'll be like these are pretty similar like i don't know if i could tell which is which yeah now after not drinking for a while and letting the old palate cleanse off. <laughs> yeah. The McAllen has a distinct sweetness. Okay. That I was not getting when I was three Glencairns in. <laughs> it has a very distinct upfront syrupy sweetness. I can see what you and, mean. And the vanilla is noticeable, which yeah. is different than any of the other two. Yeah. I think I would almost argue the back end fades to a little bit less bitter and a little bit more vanilla. I'll still say, and maybe it's just because I really like that Akintoshin, I get more syrup on the front half of the Akintoshin than I do in the Macallan. But the syrup, as we've mentioned multi, mul- a multitude of times, if I could get the word out, definitely has, it definitely transitions to bitter yeah. quickly. Um, but that initial, when it hits my palate, I'm a big fan of that. Like I'll, I will drink this regularly probably. I'm a, I enjoy it a lot. So. I will say, though, after drinking now, my third type of scotch, well, if you count blended, I guess more, but yeah, third type of scotch, Yeah, I still don't understand how the most popular scotch drink is scotch on the rocks with a twist. Oh. I don't know why you would want more citrus. <laughs> Good point. In any of these. <laughs> Maybe to like <laughs> complement what's already there. I don't know. That is, I... Typically, and I always hate saying typically because there's always that, oh, well, not this one. But <laughs> but typically, I get a citrus from most scotches. I think maybe on this table, the Macallan the least for me. I, I guess if you call this this peachy apricot, it's not citrus, but it's similar-ish. But it's, it's a citrus, citrus up front that fades to a pale fruit. Yeah. Whereas the Macallan, I do get that dried fruit that they mention on the back, and it has a little bit more depth to it to me but most scotches i get at least some citrus from especially i've always said monkey shoulder gives me a strong citrus 
I don't know that Glenn Fittick gave me as much citrus. And then I know for sure Balcona's Texas single malt did not give me much citrus, but it's pretty different from most scotches that I've had. That's just my personal opinion. So if you're listening and you try this at home, I'd be really interested to see your opinion on the difference between the two. Um, and I'm sure if some people might want to message me and say, hey, this you know, this is what you got wrong about the Lowlands, which is fine. This is my first bottle. So if you have an opinion, if you have one that you think I should try, let me know and I will try to find it. But <laughs> it's pretty difficult. But maybe I can you know, travel a little bit and get a bottle. But first impression of the Lowlands, pretty good for it not being nearly as popular around me as Highlands. It's a lot better than I anticipated it being. Yeah. And if they're all like that was way more oily of a mouthfeel yeah. for $50 than I expected. Yeah. Like, like that's I, characteristic of a $70 bottle to me. Yeah. And like, I think we both might've said more oily than the McAllen, which is more expensive. Way more expensive. Yeah. So that's pretty impressive as well. Overall, I, I, I guess impressed is what I would say about Akintoshin. Not, you know absolutely knock your socks off crazy but pretty impressive overall yeah if i'm judging it completely separate of my biases of what flavors i enjoy it's definitely worth 50 dollars. i think so as well it's definitely worth a try and if it's kind of a framework to what lowlands are like i would definitely want to try more lowlands totally agree and you put it a good way too if if you're judging it objectively because Kind of like we mentioned, the notes may not be your, you know, your cup of tea, but the complexity and the mouthfeel are both impressive for the price. Yeah. A transition that hard for $50 is impressive. Yeah. Like I can't name more than two other whiskeys in general that have that distinct of a transition. Right. For that price point. Yeah. Yeah. Like you don't even get that in a lot of $50 bourbons. Right. Exactly. It was very obvious didn't necessarily transition to a a, a most pleasant flavor <laughs> it got yeah. pretty bitter but it was an obvious difference at the transition point though i still enjoyed it it was as it faded yeah that the bitterness took over and it was like with the glenn morangi it's like a dry mouth takes over versus a bitter takes over and i almost prefer the dry mouth to take over okay because i really don't enjoy that bitterness but i could see like that's just me right and that's where i think subjectively we differ because i'm kind of like oh that's kind of cool and (laughs) it doesn't i don't like dry mouth at all so to me that creamy bitter is kind of cool but like i said if you guys tried this let me know what you think if there's another lowland bottle that you're like you gotta get this one then let me know and i'll try to find it if you want to do your homework and look it up on ohlq and see how far it is from let's say the football hall of fame because i'm kind of near the football hall of fame if it's a decent driving distance then i'll try to get my hands on it but they're not super close to me there's not a lot that or campbelltown if i'm pronouncing that correctly Overall, yeah, I want to try Campbelltown now. Yeah, yeah, we're going to have to, obviously. I mean, we're going to have to try to find a spot that I can get some of it. Um, But overall, I would say a good bottle. I will definitely try another Akintoshin. I think there might be a different one that's available, but it might have been more expensive, if I'm not mistaken. I'll try another one. Hopefully, if you had this at home, you enjoyed it. But that's all I've got for this episode. Do you have any closing comments? That's all I got. That's all you got. All right. Find us at Campbelltown. Find, yeah. Yeah. Find us at Campbelltown near us. You guys do the searching for us. That's all I've got for this episode, though. So I will leave you guys with learn to drink, drink to learn. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of Whiskey Noobs. If you like the show, please make sure that you tell anyone you know who you think would be interested in the hobby or in the podcast. That way we can help to spread the word and continue to grow. Please also make sure to review the show on Apple Podcasts and share our posts on Instagram at whiskey underscore noobs or on TikTok at whiskey noobs podcast. Uh, it only takes a couple of minutes and it really does a lot to help spread the word and grow the podcast. Also, there is an email list for the show. If you'd like to join, you can just send an email to whiskey whiskey noobs podcast at gmail.com and in the subject line put email list i will add you to the list and then you'll be updated every month with the whiskeys that we will be drinking on the show throughout the month that way you can drink right along with us and see if you're getting the same notes once again thank you so much for listening to the show the whiskey noobs podcast does not support underage or otherwise irresponsible consumption of alcohol